Okay, so now we want to do another problem that involves chain rule, but the whole problem itself, you'll have to use a quotient rule for this one here because you're dividing two different things. Now here is the quotient rule here, so we're going to use that for the whole problem, but as we go through, we're going to have to do, use chain rules for when we get to the point of finding the derivative of the top and the bottom. That does require a chain rule because you have a quantity that's raised to a power. So let's start by doing the quotient rule. So the quotient rule says, first of all, that we're going to do the, the bottom times the derivative of the top. So the bottom, we're just going to write as it is. Whenever we do the quotient rule, the top one's always f, the bottom one is always g. So we'll start with the bottom one, 2x plus 1 to the fifth power. We'll go ahead and label that as we go through here. So that's our g. Now we're going to do times the derivative of the top. Now the derivative of the top requires a chain rule. Now the way that we do that is we do the outside, derivative of the outside, times the derivative of the inside. So if we do the outside, the 4 is going to come down. We're just going to do our power rule. 4 times 6x plus 1. We subtract 1 from our power, but don't forget you also have to multiply this by the derivative of the inside. The derivative of the inside here is going to be 6. So all this that we just did, that was the derivative of the top, that's f primed. In the quotient rule, we have a minus sign that goes next. Okay, so now we have to do the top times the derivative of the bottom. The top is just going to be 6x plus 1 to the fourth power. We don't do anything with that, we just write it down. So that's our f. And then we have to multiply this by the derivative of the bottom. The derivative of the bottom also requires a chain rule. So the 5 is going to come down. We have 2x plus 1. We're going to subtract 1 from the power here. It was a fifth power. It's going to be a fourth power. Don't forget to also multiply this by the derivative of the inside. We do derivative of the outside, derivative of the inside. So now, the derivative of the inside is going to be 2. All this right here, this is going to be the g primed, and that's all this right there. The bottom of the formula is g squared, so we have to take 2x plus 1 to the fifth power, and we're squaring that. So the calculus is done at this point. Now we just have to do some simplifying. Uh, so we have to do some... Simplifying, we're also going to do a little factoring on here as well to try and simplify this as much as possible. So first, let's do the top. The top, we can put these two together, 24, and then we can do 2x plus 1 to the fifth, 6x plus 1 to the third. So we do that first. We have our minus sign, 5 and 2, we're going to do 10, and then these we'll just put... Uh, the order doesn't matter. I'll just write them in the same order as these. That way we have the 2x plus 1 together uh, first. So I'll do that and then 6x plus 1 uh, to the fourth power as well. Now the bottom one, you have a power raised under power. You have to multiply the exponents. So that's going to be 2x plus 1 to the tenth power because you're multiplying the exponents there. Okay, so now that we have this complete Next thing we have to do is the factoring step. Okay, so I'm going to leave this here. I'm going to go ahead and erase this from the top. So hopefully you, you have that written down already. So now we're going to continue uh, with the next step here. Now we have to look at what we can pull out of this. So I could pull out a 2 with a 24 and 10, but I'm just going to focus first on this power here, and then we'll simplify what we have left over. Okay, so... If we, find, we want to get a uh, common factor here, let's look at the powers first. Now the most you can pull out is the smallest power of any of these that you see here. There's a third power that's there, so we know we can pull out 6x plus 1 to the third. Now let's look at what we can pull out for the 2x plus 1. The most we can pull out would be the smallest power as well. 2x plus 1 to the fourth power, we have that. Now we can also, we can pull out... The number for here, a 2, we can pull out as well. So we're going to pull all that out, and then we'll see what we have left over. Whenever you're factoring something, it's like you're doing division. 
So it's like you're taking this whole thing here and dividing it by this. So first, 24 divided by 2 is 12 left there on the inside. I have the 2x to the 5th power. Uh, I'm taking four of them out, which means that they're going to be one of these that's going to be still uh, left over. The 6x cubed is taken out completely. So all that's going to be left here is a 2x plus 1, and that's it. Now you can always see if you factored it correctly by multiplying. If I multiply these two back together, I should get this as a result. So 2 times 12 is the 24. There's no cube here, so if I multiply that, we'll get the cube. And then for this one here, that'll give you the fifth power there. All right, so now that I have that complete, I have a minus sign. Now I want to do the next one. I want to take all this and divide it by that on the outside. 10 divided by 2 is 5 right there. The fourth power I'm pulling out completely. And now this one I'm pulling out 3, but I have 4 of these 6x plus 1s there, which means I'm going to get a 6x plus 1 left over like that. And then on the bottom, we still have 2x plus 1 to the 10th. Now that's in a factored form. There's some things that we can do to reduce this. First of all, we can reduce this here. There were 4 of them, and I can, I can take that down to a, a 6 power. So now, moving on to the next step here, do some more simplifying. So this, I'm going to cross that out, and that's going to turn into a 6. Then, I'm going to go ahead and combine all this together inside the parentheses. So I have 2, 6x plus 1 cubed. That part's gone. Inside here, I'm going to simplify that. I get 24x plus 12 minus 30x minus 5. So I'm going to go ahead and take all that through there. We already said on the bottom that this is 2x plus 1 to the 6th power. Next, I just need to combine some like terms inside there. Uh, and so I can, do, I can do that up here at this step. Limited space here on the board, so I have to kind of keep going up, racing my last step here. But we'll do that 2, 6x plus 1 cubed. Inside all this right here, we have 24 minus 30. That's going to be negative 6x. Uh, and then we have 12 minus 5, so I have plus 7x, uh, like that. And on the bottom, 2x plus 1 to the, the 6th. That's about all you can do. If you want to switch the order on those and put that out front, no problem, that's fine. But this right here would be as far as you would need to go there. Uh, there's no need to ever multiply all that out. So when you see something like that that's raised to a power in the bottom, typically you just want to leave it in that form. Sometimes you can cancel it like we just did earlier. We canceled out one of those 2x plus 1 quantities. Uh, but from here, uh, there's nothing else that you need to do. So this right here, that would be your final answer.